So my name's Sam. I'm an engineer from Toowoomba in Australia. I primarily work on farm equipment and large machinery. But in, uh, in my spare time I'm working on a project with my neighbour who's an artist, uh, developing some products and installation pieces for gallery exhibitions. And uh, we kind of had a situation developed where we needed to produce a large number of quite complicated parts in a rapid time frame. And um, these were parts that we'd been prototyping using an FDM printer, um, uh, MakerBot 2. And they were working out all right, they were pretty good. Um, we got an order for you know, 50 batches, which if we'd been able to print with the MakerBot 100% of the time with unlimited material and not do any cleanup, would still have taken a little over eight weeks of constant print time to produce. And we had about four to do it in. So we started looking around at our options. And, uh, you know, um, when you sort of want to look at rapid manufacturing for plastic parts, the general wisdom is uh, to look at things like moulding techniques, like yeah, injection moulding or vacuum casting. And these techniques are great and um, you know, provide excellent cost per pull and stuff like that. But the problem is, for a side project with, you know, in the art world, we don't have a lot of money to spend on things like tooling or setup costs. And we also don't have the time frame necessary to go to an offshore provider to try and bring the cost down. So we kind of were a bit stuck. We got quotes done. I got the quotes from a number of people here in, here in Australia to do uh, SLA or DLP printing of the parts and also to, to print vacuum casting moulds, which are usually good for about 100 pulls, um, which would have been great. But the cheapest quote I could get for the 50 batches of parts that I needed was $27,000. And um, that was a bit of a no-go for us. So we looked around and um, we found that there was a guy in Brisbane who was developing a DLP printer which would look like it was going to be pretty well spot on for what we were trying to do. Um, and it turns out it has been. Because what we're really interested in at this stage is, is rapid prototyping and producing a, a finished product for market which is of good enough finishing quality to, to be comfortable presenting to people in a gallery environment but which doesn't take nine and a half weeks to print. So, yeah, at this stage I've spent about, hmm, over the last two weekends, over, uh, probably over 100 hours now printing uh, with this printer. And um, it's been great. It's been absolutely fantastic. I think I worked it out earlier. I've used almost, produced almost eight kilos worth of parts in that time frame. The average time to print a full build volume is about three and a half hours. It's, it's, yeah, it's impossible to believe until you actually do it. And it works fantastically well. Um, I'm frankly blown away. Um, I don't really think that there's anything like this available for anyone at the moment in the world of printing. Uh, we always knew with the sort of designs we were looking at, organic, you know, fluted shapes, strange curves, things like that, that we're never going to be able to do it effectively in the long term with the traditional additive manufacturing. So we always knew we'd be looking at an SLA or DLP solution, but uh, the, the idea that there would be something Australian developed uh, within local reach of us, uh, that we could have such a great relationship with the developers, you know, from the very beginning and, you know, be able to come to the house and do things like this and, and see the printer action and produce parts on it. Um, that's not the sort of thing that, you, you know, you used to, I think, in in the realm of the new technology. Uh, certainly, I'm, uh, you know, as a working engineer, that's not the sort of thing I'm used to when I'm talking looking at new technology. So, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. Oh, um, before this weekend, no, before last weekend, I have never actually had to operate a 3D printer before in my life. Um, but I guess I get a bit of a head start because, you know, it's a CNC machine. I've operated CNC machines before. And if you treat it like a CNC machine, then you're set. But yeah, it took me probably two hours, really, to feel comfortable configuring jobs, programming, and jobs and, and running them on the printer. Failure rate. Um, okay, so because we're printing as fast as physically possible, 
Um, and I'll admit, due to lack of sleep and <laughs> not paying entirely enough attention all the time, I've had some failures. Um, total number of parts in individual parts printed so far is about 225 of anything reasonable and then about 700 sort of little nothing bigger than the end of your thumb kind of thing parts. Uh, in total I might have had a failure rate of off the top of my head I can think of four larger parts that failed on the printer and maybe a dozen small parts that failed on the printer. I've only thrown out a handful of things out of you know, 700 individual pieces and mostly the cause of the failure was user error. Um, either I hadn't supported the part well enough or I tried to be, you know, a little bit too fast and loose with the parameters of the print. Um, and yeah, which is fine, but it's really, it's hard to be upset about failing a print when you know that you can just restart it with the same, <laughs> with a portable build file change one parameter and you've only wasted like an hour at most so yeah it's both cheap failure and you know and not common failure it's great uh, removing parts from the build plate is pretty painless um, anything that's supported is a walk in the park um, anything that's built directly on the build plate a little bit of gentle force and it'll come away not quite easily um, there's very little cleanup involved. You can print pretty well straight away, immediately after you've removed your first or your last round of parts. Um, I've never like I've put about six liters of resin through this so far, um, and have yet to clean the tank. I don't see any reason why you would. It seems to be that has absolutely no impact on the printing. Um, the overflow means that you're not constantly trying to jockey your fluid level to get it right. Um, it's pretty, it's extremely convenient to set up and run the prints physically. Um, the most difficult thing to do is remember to always wear gloves. The cost of printing with this printer was one of the other real attractions for us because producing the parts with an FDM printer previously, because the volume of support required to produce anything with an, you know, an interesting or unique shape um, on an FDM printer, you're generally throwing away about half of your material before you've even, you know, cleaned up the part for presentation. So we were spending about twenty-seven to twenty-eight dollars Australian to print a set of parts. Um, the great thing with the with the um, if you think about printer is that we like I know that the value, the cost of our printing is the volume of resin used really plus a little bit for overhead. We might have spent six bucks on a kit on each set, including the cost of, um, you know, electricity and wear and tear on the lenses. Uh, yeah, I think, I think if it works out to be any more than that, I'll be desperately surprised. Um, so it's about, probably costing us about a quarter of what it would cost to run uh, these print jobs on, on the, the um, MakerBot 2 that we were using previously. So I guess like the, the, the real power with the, the super speed printing comes from having the dual projectors and obviously you have to ensure that they're correctly aligned, um, otherwise you get sort of a bit of a uh, inaccurate, you potentially get an inaccuracy in the XY um, resolution. Happily it's extremely easy. Um, if you've ever squared the picture on your TV screen, you'll be able to handle aligning uh, to print with, with the uh, big printer. It's, yeah, it's a walk in the park. Your grandma could probably do it.